So, do we already introduce ourselves? Should we do it again for real? Who's going to start? Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Chan, and I'm uh, the lead artist. He drew this. that pa painting right there. Right? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Okay. I'm Larry Ahern, lead animator. You killed that bird. And I think that was a Leela scene. Oh, okay. She's the animal killer. <laughs> I like the mustache tree. Isn't that loud shot, Peter? I'm Tim Schaefer, co-project leader of this uh, lovely game. And I am Dave Grossman, other project leader and designer and writer, along with Tim, of this lovely game. That should have been our titles, Co and Other. Co and Other, that. yeah. Clint Bajakian, one of the composers. Peter McConnell, one of the composers. Nonsense. Nice. Me feel great. The game has begun, you guys. Okay, so we saw the lovely, what was the name of that classical music that plays during the opening Ros voice? Rossini, uh, William Tell Overture. It's the quiet part of the William Tell Overture. There's two classical pieces that mean mourning in cartoons. Yes, there's that one, and then there's... And the other one is... That's from... Where is that from? I don't remember. It might be Pierre Gint or something like that. It's a good guess. It's not another place in the Rossini. No, no, I think it's Pierre Gint. I think, I think... But for that opening scene with the music, we actually got the score and, and, yeah. and sequenced the, the ink into the uh, MIDI sequencer. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big panning sequences, like wide pieces of art for the game. Pan oh, the room over. shot? It was a double room? Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's a poster with an L from Laverne and Shirley on that poster back there. <laughs> Here's one of our giant animation scenes. How did you lip sync back then? Because we didn't have any like tool. Nowadays we use a tool for lip syncing. Do you just by hand? I think get a we little, just like, timed it out like the old fashioned timing sheet. Now that was for the cinematics, but for in game, wasn't it Eric Wilmunder? I thought it just blah, blah, blah chatter. I think the in game, game was just on off with audio on off. Yeah, there's, there's no actual lip syncing for yeah. the majority of the game, so it's which just, is funny since I have gotten many compliments on the lip syncing for this game over <laughs> the years. Because, you know, it loops around and every percentage of the time it's on, right? Well, because I remember Eric. Yeah, I think Eric designed a, a, some kind of an algorithm for making the, the lips move to the, vol the level of volume. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah, if there of the waveform. Of the waveform. The audio, waveform. It stops yeah. moving the lips. Yeah. That's true. Now these uh, credits were done by Kyle Balda. That's you were right. Entirely on his internship. Yep. So wait, uh, did we not pay for these he, credits, uh, or did we pay for them? Time. He got paid, right? I think so. Yeah. He took time. This is Peter, the other Peter. Um, we took time uh, out of CalArts. He came and uh, spent some time with us, and we gave him this intro as an internship, and he did a, a fabulous job. Seems like a funny thing to do. Like, uh, hey, you're an intern. You've never done this before. Do you want to do the entire? animated intro the most but I remember <laughs> when uh, he did you know when he finished something he shared it with us we were all blown away by it yeah it was awesome the most iconic <laughs> signature piece can you yeah. hurry and finish that before you go back you to school set the entire That's right. tone for the look of our game and it was excellent it was awesome. I would I would later learn that that was the perfect this was the perfect piece to have Kyle work on uh, because he was colorblind it turns out I didn't know I, that I, I didn't saw know. him I working on something else and he had other people picking his colors for him Oh, interesting. There was another 3D artist we had there in B Building that was colorblind too, and it was one of those things where people were just kind of, have you noticed everything he does? The reds don't make sense or whatever. I couldn't remember what it was. Oh, the cow. I always get really happy watching these credits. I like the stretchy cow neck. That cow should have showed up again later somewhere. Yeah. <sighs> Missed opportunity. What if the cow had come on their journey with them? Everything would have been so different. Well, here's you know? the story explanation right now for why the cow doesn't come. Because he's just tired. Doesn't want to make like a walk I've been to the, the mansion before. Now this is the fight I had with Peter McConnell. Do you remember this, Peter? Yes, I, I was gonna. I, you I were gonna mention that. You were gonna remember it. Because the opening cutscene was too long, and we we always had a problem with too long opening cutscenes, and so we were like. Let's split it in half and put an interactive sequence. So there's an interactive sequence that's about to start. But I seem to remember it was the wrong time of day for you because it's nighttime outside. It started in the daytime with the mutation scene, then it became nighttime. Right. But then what happened? To, then it turned into daytime at the end. That's what bothered you because the music couldn't make that transition in your mind. Yeah, I, I, well, I think mostly I was I was crabby because, because you know, we had to... Eat the, the cuts...
scenes and the interactivity required a bunch of programming in iMuse. And I'd finished it one way. <laughs> and, and then you changed it to another. And so I think I came up with some sort of artistic argument that had, had to do with daylight like that. And, and, uh, but, but that was an important thing to learn running a project to not change the f after. That one looks like it's from a local hardware store. It's from George's Hardware. George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. My favorite. It's stuck to the floor. Nineteen fifty two. Out of order. It's permanently attached to the countertop. Laverne's covering that territory. I don't really want it. The safe is closed. I hope no one's watching. I look so goofy on video. It's a bottle of correctional fluid. I don't have time for that now. I'm on a mission.
Gee, Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. Wow, it's from my favorite movie. Boy, the Edisons are a spectacularly ugly family. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops. Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river! Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children, the Chronogon! Doc, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people. Well, I'll be! Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Die! <laughs> Die! We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said imitation diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh. Jewels? What happened to Hokey and Laverne? 
I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. Maybe I put them upstairs. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time. I've got the plans. Quick, we have to flash them to Hoagie. How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes! Down the toilet. No, through time. Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times. Tentacles are taking over the world. And now the toilet's backing up. Okay. Come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred? How'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time to the world, I guess. It's the battery plants I'm supposed to give to that Red Edison dude. Huh, this door appears to be locked. Soon all the power of the heavens will be mine! All mine! If only we had some nasty weather!
It's totally covered with crud. It's closed. Cool, the room clerk's a mummy. Must have poor circulation. Yo. Hello. What's up, you cold? Cold? I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. He's going to give the log to starving children? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George, I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing a... a, a, a writing the... We are drafting a constitution for the United States. Don't say draft, you'll only make me colder. Wimp. Why don't you have some hot coffee? Oh, I can't stand coffee. It makes me irritable and want to bang my head against the walls. You say that as though it was a bad thing. Do you have any idea how much it costs to fix a wall these days? It's a racket. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any um, amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any br brilliant ideas? What about free sandwiches for all roadies? No, there's no such thing as... Don't say it, dude. I've heard it before. How come you sign your name so big? Astigmatism. You mean you have, like, a childhood complex? All right. The, the, the truth is that a friend once told me that women go c c crazy over guys with a big signature. Awesome blanket there, dude. Thank you. It was given to me by my d dear old colorblind Aunt Hattie. Well, I gotta go, dude. Hey, tall, dark, and spiffy. My name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure, I've heard of you, dude. What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas, my name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Dude, is that like THE Constitution? Right now it's just A Constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight creative block right after the preamble. That's why we put up a suggestion box over there. Could you start a fire, please? I'd love to oblige you, young man, but I can't. This is the only log and I'm saving it for posterity. How can you let Hancock suffer like that? 
A real man is warmed by the fires of his spirit. You should listen to Washington relate his experiences at Valley Forge and take heed. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity cravat team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas. Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? I like the we the people part. That's not in the Declaration of... Say, that's not bad. Maybe we can use it. Well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? It looks like a martini shaker. They don't seem to have gotten too far. Excuse me. Yes? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Whoa. Indeed. Weren't you president or something? Yes, I expect to be chosen president unanimously. I'm very well connected. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? Depends on how many cherry trees you've chopped down. Well, I am quite the adept tree cutter. Men still tell tales of my youthful prowess. Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truths, eh? Well... I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there isn't. I only cut down cherry trees. Family tradition, you understand, cherries only. There's nothing out there but cedar and kumquats. Cool view of the outhouses. I don't wanna. I don't wanna.
I won't be able to get it very clean without soap. It's closed. Hey. What is it? You look kind of familiar. Of course I do. Then again, maybe not. Do you know Ben Franklin? Franklin? <laughs> I would never associate with that overstuffed goofball. He has the stupidest idea about glasses with one red lens and one blue one. What are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? I know an inventor who looks a bit like you. Well, it's not one of my sons, that's for sure. It appears that I, Red Edison, foremost genius of my day, am to be the last in a long line of gifted inventors. My nearly indistinguishable sons have decided that they want to be artists. I think it was Jed's idea. Or is it Ned? Ah, well, the left-handed one at any rate. It must be some sort of bad blood on their mother's side. What are you inventing? It's a new size independent fastening mechanism based on circular geometry. Well, see you later. You might. Mmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant design. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. Ah, excellent! I need that for my super battery. It's all rumpled up. Here I am, don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess. That's not what I'd call a lot of cleaning supplies. I won't be able to get it very clean without soap. The water's all sudsy now. Dum -de -dum. <laughs> Looks like a big storm. See, this is why I never wash my car. Hey, Ben. What do you want? Where are you going? What about your experiment? Even science sometimes gets cold on account of rain, my boy. But how are you ever going to get lightning if you're not going to stand out in a storm? To be frank, which I am, I don't know. The science of electrodynamics, much like your mind apparently, 
is still in a state of relative infancy. Back to the drawing board, I say. What a genius. You guys, I'll get to the flag next. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, chill. Take your time. Don't tell me you've got another design change for the flag. I've got another design change for the flag. I knew it. What's the current brainstorm from our fickle founding fathers? It should have a hologram on it somewhere. Oh, what the heck. At this point, I'd do anything just to have it over with. Put the pattern on the table and I'll look at it when I'm done with this job. I don't quite see how it can fly. I don't quite see how it can fly. Thank you. This is exactly the sort of thing I need for the time capsule. I'll bury it tonight and it won't be seen for hundreds of years. Future generations are in your debt. Whoa. So as soon as Hoagie gets that battery working, we're set. I'm afraid not. We still need a diamond for the main unit. And your friend in the future needs power too, if she's still alive. Alive? Get me out of here! I Okay, I... Hmm, the design's solid, but I need some waterproof material, like cast iron or something. It's sure quiet in here. I wonder if there might be any ideas worth discussing in the suggestion box. Maybe somebody should take a look. 
my sailor had my have an idea. Does it have anything to do with starting a fire? No. I was thinking it's about time we open the suggestion box. Don't you agree? Sure, George, if you say so. Yes, whatever you think is fine with us. Excellent. What's he thinking? No one of any importance has been here all day. What could be in the suggestion box? Perhaps he intends to suggest something himself. Oh. Ah, here's a suggestion. It says, George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. What do you think, gentlemen? Mm, whatever you say, George. Your name's on it. I'm sure you must have a good reason for suggesting it. Yes. It's strange. I don't quite... Well, I'm sure I had a reason for it. If there are no objections, we shall add it to the Constitution immediately. No? Good, and so shall it be law. What's a vacuum cleaner? Looks like someone's dentures were in here. Hey, I've got to put them somewhere. Uh, hi, ho oh, hi yourself. Wow, you can talk. Wow, so can you. What a coincidence. I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Well, if you want to put it that way. Is this some kind of a trick? I don't do magic. I'm just a horse. Nice teeth. Thanks. I paid quite a bit for them. Did I mention how great your teeth look? Thanks again. What's a nice horse like you doing in a place like this? Hey, I live here. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get back to the future and save the world. The future, huh? And I thought that Franklin guy was off his nut. Well, I gotta go. See you later. question is, which one's stuffed and which one's the real McCoy? I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither one of us McCoys. We are Edisons, Ned and Jed. Who's who? Does it really matter? Even our dear father can't tell us apart. He only knows that one of us is left-handed while the other is right but that neither of us are following in his tiny scientific footsteps. Hold still, Jed! So, I'm almost too frightened to ask, are you the marble delivery man? Or the model? I'm the delivery man, okay, if I unload in here? Actually, we are well supplied with medium, so thank you, no. I'm the model. Should I take my clothes off now? No. 
No, you most definitely should not. We couldn't get your body shape right anyway, unless we cemented two slabs of marble together. But then your statue would have a big seam in it. That's okay, it would have one anyway. Look, don't call us. We'll call you. Dang. I'm no marble delivery man, but rock is my life. <laughs> I'm sure that's terribly amusing, where you're from. Where exactly did you come from? The valley. Ah, the beautiful Shenandoah Valley. If only you could be there right now, eh? Wouldn't that be nice for both of us? Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. Excuse me. Yes? I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truth, eh? Well... I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there... Oh, well, what do you know? There is a cherry tree out there. Well, let's go chop the sucker down. I said come down from there at once! Try to understand? I'm stuck in this 